Welcome. Uh, my name is Matthew Buckland. I'm an immunology consultant in London, and I'm just going to spend five minutes talking about thyroid antibodies in patients who are euthyroid. So we'll cover what euthyroidism is in this context, what thyroid antibodies we are talking about, and then what the clinical significance and the impact on patient management of those might be. So a patient who is euthyroid has normal levels of thyroid stimulating hormone and normal levels of T3 and T4 thyroid hormones. If you have a properly functioning thyroid hormone axis is essential for normal metabolic function and overall health and Euthyroidism refers to the state where thyroid hormone production is within normal limits. In terms of thyroid antibodies, the commonest of these measured in a diagnostic laboratory are thyroid peroxidase antibodies, previously called thyroid microsomal antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies are a subset of that specificity uh, and now what's most commonly measured in association with autoimmune thyroid disease. It's possible to measure thyroglobulin antibodies, and that's also raised in a variety of thyroid disorders. But thyroglobulin antibodies are nearly always measured only in the context of thyroid cancer when thyroglobulin levels are being measured, because the presence of thyroglobulin antibodies can interfere with the biochemistry assays for thyroglobulin as a tumour marker. And so thyroglobulin antibodies aren't usually recommended for testing in the context of clinical thyroid disease other than cancer. TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies are associated with Graves' disease and can also be seen in patients who are euthyroid with eye disease. The autoimmune thyroid diseases uh, are often defined clinically both from thyroid dysfunction and the presence of autoantibodies. So, as already highlighted, thyroid gland function is essential for re regulating metabolism, growth and development. In general, uh, antibodies are a marker and not disease causing. That's particularly true of thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. But TSH receptor antibodies can be stimulatory or inhibitory and therefore do affect thyroid function and do have a role in the pathogenesis of, for example, Graves' disease. The presence of thyroid antibodies does not always mean thyroid dysfunction, but may be a marker of increased risk if persistent over time. So how prevalent are they in euthyroid individuals? Well, up to 25% of euthyroid individuals may have a positive thyroid peroxidase antibody. That makes it more difficult to interpret sometimes, but higher TETA levels of thyroid peroxidase antibodies are usually used to define those that are more likely to be of clinical significance. And low-level antibodies are not usually clinically relevant. Screening or testing for thyroid antibodies can identify at-risk individuals, particularly those with a family history of thyroid disease, and there can be a role in some pregnant women. It is known that in euthyroid pregnant women, the presence of TPO antibodies increases the risk of adverse pregnancy outcome, both miscarriage and preterm birth. However, interventional studies have shown no benefit in supplementing thyroxin uh, on pregnancy outcome. Both European and American guidelines suggest that since no intervention is recommended, routine TPO assessment is not recommended in euthyroid pregnant women. There are other specific patient groups, for example, those with type 1 diabetes, who may be at risk of additional organ-specific autoimmunity, i.e. celiac disease and or thyroid autoimmunity. So thyroid screening in type 1 diabetes is recommended in many guidelines, and the presence of antibodies may form a component of that. 
There are other specific disorders in individuals who may be euthyroid, for example, urticaria, where the presence of thyroid antibodies may be used as a surrogate for uh, autoimmune forms of those disease and where other specific markers uh, are not available. Increased TPO antibody levels in patients with chronic urticaria are more common and it's thought that there may be a role in driving chronic autoimmune urticaria symptoms. That may be important because some of those individuals respond better to immunosuppressive therapy and less well to conventional treatments like antihistamines or anti-IgE monoclonal antibody therapy. So what would we consider to be a reasonable monitoring and management strategy for a euthyroid patient uh, with regards to thyroid autoantibodies? Well, the risk of thyroid autoimmunity doubles from 2 to 4% annually in euthyroid individuals who are TPO antibody positive. So once that TPO antibody status is known, it may be appropriate to perform intermittent testing for thyroid function, particularly in those individuals who either have other underlying disorders or who give early symptoms of thyroid autoimmunity. In pregnancy, we, as we've highlighted, women who are euthyroid but have positive antibodies are at higher risk of spontaneous miscarriage. But the women with TPO antibodies who are euthyroid at the time of birth may also suffer a higher rate of postpartum thyroiditis and hypothyroidism. So if that antibody status is known, additional thought can be given as to those symptoms if they present early in the postpartum period. Regular testing of thyroid function at the diagnosis of specific autoimmune conditions such as diabetes is recommended and periodically uh, if symptoms suggest thyroid disease and again particularly in those who are at high risk because they're antibody positive and finally testing for thyroid function and antibodies at the diagnosis of more refractory urticaria can be helpful in management. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.